Charlie Patton. He's joining us from London and is the founder and director of Seawater Greenhouse, the pioneering company who first brought this technique to market. Uh, Charlie, good to have you with us. So first up, why did you decide to launch this project? Oh, I've been working on this for many years, uh, 25 years or more, and all, all those projects you described I've been involved in um, at some stage. And it just seemed to me very obvious that um, we have an awful lot of seawater and we have a virtually unlimited supply of it. And if we can use seawater to grow more crops on the land, then it solves so many problems in one go. Obviously, you can't irrigate plants with seawater, but you can turn seawater into fresh water and you can use seawater for evaporative cooling, which reduces the amount of water plants need by tenfold or more. Now, of course, the process that you need to go through is desalination, which is removing the salt, the sodium from that seawater. Is that expensive? Is, is, is it a costly process? How sort of scalable is this kind of thing, Charlie? People have always thought that desalination um, is a dirty business, but it's changed an awful lot over in recent times, rather like solar PV, which maybe 10 or 15 years ago was only the stuff that NASA could afford to use. Now it is very commonplace, it is very low cost, and we can guarantee that the cost will continue to fall. And the same thing has happened with reverse osmosis, with desalination, uh, that the, the, the equipment and the membranes improve all the time, and the cost comes down all the time. And, and I think it's, it's really now becoming a no-brainer that if we can drive desalination using renewable energy, then we solve so many problems. Absolutely. And this is obviously being used to, uh, to irrigate crops once the, the salt has been taken out of it. How far away are we from being able to use um, seawater for other, other um, uses? Um, the main thing we use seawater for, in fact, is evaporative cooling. Uh, I have a piece here of the small piece of evaporator that we use. Um, and we just trickle water down this pad and the air that comes through the pad is cooler and more humid. And um, this is a very low cost, very cheap, very simple process that we can cool fields, you know, um, large areas of land, at hundreds of square kilometers if we need to. Now, this is obviously being used in, in arid parts of the world at the moment, in deserts. Are we likely to see it in more wet areas? Is there a need for this sort of thing in more wet areas, would you think? I think not in more wet areas, no. Wet areas presumably are getting sufficient rainfall for vegetation and therefore have a, a, enough supply of, of fresh water. This focus is on North Africa, on Australia, on the Middle East, on any arid region um, where there is insufficient rainfall to grow crops. And Charlie, then, in those areas where you are using this technique, there are some poor communities, some poor parts of the world. What kind of funding is needed to make sure that these projects can be scalable and actually of use? I was really interested in the one in Jordan that's selling produce to local markets. Is that something that can be used in different parts of the world too? Yeah, for sure. Um, there's, a, there's a value in, in growing horticultural crops everywhere. You know, a tomato is worth a, whatever a tomato is worth anywhere in the world. Uh, so there is an economic value. In, in producing crops, but I have to say, it's much cheaper to grow crops uh, or to enable crops to be grown in some of these hot arid regions than it is to supply food aid. So you think that actually growing food in using this technique might actually be more viable than just sort of sending aid in? We have a very simple back of the envelope calculation which suggests that if we could make Somaliland a population of 4 million people self-sufficient in fresh produce at a cost of uh, something like $400 million, which is 1% of the annual food aid oh, budget to Sub-Saharan Africa. Fascinating. So yeah. yeah, get it off the back of the envelope, Charlie, and get that into a proper proposal. It's a really interesting moment. Right, Charlie well, Patton there, the uh, director of Seawater Greenhouse. Really appreciate your time.